Uh, thanks, Michael. Hi. Uh, I'm Luke, and I have been working and messing around with Gutenberg. Oh. See? <laughs> Since, uh, since basically, you know, uh, it was in beta stages and, and, uh, and it was starting to come out. And uh, I, I would be really interested to get an idea from the room. Who here um, has not yet had a, a, a real hands-on play with Gutenberg? A, wow, that's a lot of people considering that it's, it's actually in WordPress, you know, it's like, it's a, it's actually released, and I'd say most of the people here haven't used Gutenberg. Out of the people who have used Gutenberg, uh, on a scale of like one to three, one being you don't like it, and three is you love it, how do you rate it? Can I get, or I mean, even if you've messed around with it a little bit, um, can I get your one, one's hand, hands up? A couple, twos? Okay, and threes. Okay, most people in two. Most people right in the middle. Um, okay, and and then, um, gosh, all this hands up stuff. So, so I'm also want to know, want to get an idea of where do you sit in terms of technical ability? Um, put your hand up if, and we'll keep it up for this one. If you've modified your theme before. Okay, and keep it up if uh, you maybe have written your own theme or plugin with PHP. And keep it up if you've got some experience writing JavaScript for Gutenberg with React or something like that. Yeah. There's still some hands up, um, but a lot of them have, have gone down. And I wonder if uh, that's partly the reason why we've maybe this room in general hasn't um, got such a crash hot opinion of Gutenberg. As for me, I love it. I use it every day, I blog with it, I'm all over it and I develop for it and I have a lot of fun with it, but I absolutely see this need for regular people, uh, for regular agencies, developers who might not have taken the leap to learn JavaScript deeply, that there's this real need to figure out how can we embrace Gutenberg? How can we give our clients the Gutenberg experience? And uh, that's, that's something that's, that's kind of difficult and kind of hard to wrap your head around until now. And that's what my talk's about today. So here's my second slide. So today's talk is for you if you're the kind of person who wants to learn how to build blocks and you're the kind of person who is familiar and comfortable with HTML and CSS, maybe even comfortable with putting in a little PHP template tag. Um, and, and that's maybe where your ability stops. Or maybe it goes beyond there, but it's always nice to do things a little bit easier when that's possible. Yeah? So what we're going to do today is a little bit, a little bit out there and, and a little bit nerve wracking. And it's the sort of thing that they tell you when you're a speaker, never do this. We're going to do a live demo. And uh, not only are we going to do a live demo, but we are going to build a block from scratch and you are going to decide what block it's going to be. How does that sound? You think we can do it in the space of this talk? Think you can build a Gutenberg block? Yeah. All right. So the first step is, we've got to figure out what sort of block we're going to build. Uh, has anybody here had an idea for a block that you wished existed? Maybe keep it on the simple side, um, given that we're, we're uh, limited in time. But um, yeah, go for it. A table. It's a good one. There is actually built into Gutenberg a native table block, but we could explore uh, building our, a sort of a custom table. Is there anybody else over there? A team member. A team member. Oh yeah, I like that one. That's pretty good. So you'd have like a profile picture of them, maybe their um, title and their name. Oh yeah, that's great. Yes. Testimonial block. Testimonial block. Also, really handy. Yeah. 
pictures and people. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, one other or? No, well, why don't we take a vote? We could do testimonial block, uh, we could do a table, or we could do the, the team member with you know, the photo and, and, and the title and all that sort of thing. So uh, hands up for the first one, the uh, testimonial. Hands up for the uh, table block. Hands up for the team member. Oh, looks like the team member wins. All right, cool. So when we start thinking about building blocks, the first thing that we really want to do is figure out what the block looks like. So I don't know what design tools you might use. I know I, I work with some agencies that like have embraced Figma. Figma is fantastic, or maybe you're on Sketch or something like that. But I always just like to start with pen and paper. So let's start thinking about this block. We'll put it in a rectangle. Now, team member, what do we need? So, call out to me some of the things that's going to be on this block. Photo. Photo. All right. We could do photo in, a photo in a circle. Where do we want to put it? In the middle, on the side? Top, optional top, left, middle. Okay. <laughs> yep. We can make all these fields optional. You know, I heard someone laughing at my picture. That's not very nice. I heard someone laughing at my picture, and that wasn't very nice. I was offended. Um, all right. I think we should feature their name like fairly prominently up here, maybe like, and then uh, below that, their position, yeah, the title, yeah. All right, we'll put that slightly lower. Uh, anything else? Uh, contact details, I heard. All right, yep, that's a good one. I'll put that on, yep. About, a little description. All right, we'll go with that. So um, let's, let's set aside an area here for this is going to be, you know, some text. And then maybe we'll put like our social buttons at the bottom, like e email, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah. All right. How's that look to everyone? Good. So let's think about this a little bit more. We're going to need, from over here, we're going to need an image. We're going to need, uh, what's this? This is their name. Now. Um, we might call this like a um, profile photo, and that's an image. We're going to have a name. That's just going to be a text field. Same here with um, their, their position. Uh, over here, this would be, what do we call this? Bio. Nice. That's more than just one line of text. We might use a text area for that. And then we're going to have these three social buttons. And they're all going to be URLs, yeah? Email, Facebook, and Twitter URLs. All right. Does this seem like a familiar process to you in terms of design, how you would normally go out about building a website? Cool. Let's put it together. And this is where we move into the live demo mode. Um, I'm, if you don't mind, I'll just drop the lights down a little because so that you can see my screen a little better. How's that? And all right, well, this is code, but let's switch over to WordPress. Um, all right, so this is, this is a WordPress install I put together just, uh, just now. Um, I'm going to switch to my child theme so that we can make some changes to the theme later on. And to build what we've designed, I'm going to open up Block Lab. So Block Lab is a plugin that's available for free that really sort of enables us to get through most of what we need to do here. All right, I got my, uh, my design. I got Block Lab here. Um, I'm just going to trash this example block for now and add a new one. So, what's it called? What are we going to call our, our new block? Team, team member, that's it. Yeah, right. 
team member. Um, and before we add our fields, I, I like to just go in here and choose an icon. That one works nicely. And we'll put it in. Oh, common will do. All right. And we'll go ahead and add our fields. So the first one was we'll put in their name first. And that's just the text area. And Block Lab has these extra uh, fields here for help text and default value, placeholder text, that sort of stuff. But we'll leave that for now. We don't really need that for a name can put in here title. Oh, no, we, we, we were going to call it position, weren't we? All right. Um, we're going to have their profile photo. All right, and here we change the field type to an image. You can see the options for that changed a little. Close that. Uh, and then what have we got next? The bio is going to be a text area. Close that. And then we have email. Uh, we'll put it, we'll ask for the email address. Um, and then and we can do a mail to link that way. Uh, we might put in the Facebook URL. and Twitter. Now, if I was doing this for a client, I might choose to fill in a little bit of help text here. Like, I might put in here a link to the team member's Twitter. Um, because we don't want just the at handle, that's not going to work for us. Uh, although, you know, we could work around that, but there we go. Um, we could even put in some placeholder text to help with that. Okay. And we'll hit publish. And that's done. So pretty quickly, we've already built out the structure of our block. And now we're just going to work with familiar languages like PHP, HTML, CSS to build out the block itself. Now, I'm not a CSS whiz, so any front-end devs in the crowd might have to give me a hand as we do that. So what we have to do is we're just going to create inside of our theme a new theme template, all right, for our block. And it's in here, 2019 child slash blocks slash, I'm going to copy this, block dash team member. So here I am in my, my editor. I've got a blocks folder already in my theme. Create a new file there blocks-team-member.php, and I'm good to go. I can start writing out my template. So what's it going to look like? Start with a div. All right. Now, we want the profile photo. I could use Flexbox or something fancy here, but I might just float it to the left if that's OK with you. I'm even just going to use a straight image. We'll just leave the source out for now. Um, then we want the name. We might put that in h H2. I'm just stubbing this out. We're going to put the position in a H3. Any SEO experts here have a problem with that? We'll put the bio in a paragraph. Let's just uh, put a few little comments in here. Make this the name. Position, bio, and uh, I will, we'll put in maybe these social things inside of another div. All right. Uh, let's get super fancy, actually, instead of using a div. We we'll use a UL. What do we think? Good, good call. Yeah. All right. Um, we're gonna have email, Facebook, and Twitter. Obviously, this is gonna be blank to start with, um, but just to test that it works. Um, all right. So that's it. That's my template. 
pretty straightforward. We'll, we'll have to make sure we fill all this in in a second, actually put in these values. But let's just see what it looks like so far in, Word, in, uh, in WordPress. If we refresh this page, we can see now this is the template that it's using. And in a new tab, I'm just going to edit my Hello World post here. All right, I'll skip these tips. Insert a new block. Here's our team member. All right, none of these actually do anything yet, but uh, why not fill it in? Call out a name to me. I missed that, sorry. Nurk. Nurk, okay. Mm. Silent G. Silent G, oh, <laughs> thanks. How's that? All right, and Fred's our resident. Tech head. Sorry. Tech head. Tech head. All right. Um, oh, geez, I, you know, in anticipation of this talk, I did download a couple of example images we might use, but I don't know if I got any of a person. Let's find out. Uh, we got we got someone pouring coffee. That'll do. Uh, we'll drop that in. And uh, all right, any any copywriters in the audience? Oh yeah, okay. Oh, dollar. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Fred at <laughs> G, and you okay? Um, we'll leave out Facebook, because, yeah, Facebook. Uh, the real Fred Nurk. All right. All right, now if we click away from here, we'll get a preview. Now, a preview isn't what we planned for it to be, but you can see already that we've got that H2 happening in there, and we've got our dot points, which is really nice. I've noticed that I've just noticed this now is that our 2019 theme includes some predefined styles for the H2 that I kind of don't like. Now I could sort of just counter those in my style sheet, but instead of doing that, I think we'll change to a H3 instead. Let's see if that helps. We'll change this to a H4. This is just a quick workaround because I don't like those 2019 things. That's a bit nicer. All right, back to our template. Next step is we're going to use a couple of really, really simple PHP functions uh, to pull through the data from our block into, uh, into the template here. So we need to know these field names. That's what we're going to be using. First one is name. And I, we can do it really simply here. I'll just get rid of this. We're going to use block underscore field and then put in name. So this here, this name is this here, all right? And then we can do the same thing. We just copy paste this block field. Uh, what do we call this one? Position. All right. And then we can even do the same for bio. Um, now, the image. Let's just see what happens when we put in block field image. What did we use? Profile photo here. Okay. We'll come back to the social in a second. Let's have a look. We can just click in and then click out. It loads it again. We've got our image. That's nice. And our name. That's all looking good. Obviously, we need a little bit of style happening, but, but we'll get there in a second. Um, all right, let's put in our socials now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of a PHP chunk at the top here. And we're going to pull through uh, into variables our email. And instead of block field, which outputs the value, I'm just going to do block value email. And that returns it so that I can put it into a variable. Hopefully that makes sense to you. We're going to do the same for Facebook and Twitter. All 
I'm just going to check that those are the right names. Uh, email address, uh, there we go. Okay. And then down here, what we can do is, we can just do a simple if block. Uh, we're going to do if not empty email. And then we can do echo. Here, email. All right, so we're just checking to see that we've actually got an email address in there. And if there is one, then we'll output it inside of a list item. Okay? Now, I'm, uh, I'm in favor of coding standards as, as, as the next guy but this is a live demo, we want to get it through it quickly, so don't nitpick on me for that. All right. So, if empty email, output the email, uh, empty Facebook, empty Twitter. Anyone see any mistakes here? Looks good. Okay. Let's have a look, see what happens now in our block. We just click in here, click out again. There you go. And so you notice we didn't put in a Facebook, so we didn't get that out again. So that's how we use block field and slightly different block value. The next step, you can probably imagine, we're just going to create a new file here, block, same name, block-team-member, but instead of .php, we'll call it .css. And, uh, and now we can start doing things like this. Uh, let's see here, we're going to go uh, float left, uh, height, uh, like 150 pixels, width is going to be auto, something like this. Uh, it's not going to work with border radius if I just did an image, so I have to put it image inside of a wrapper here. Uh, span class equals profile, photo, and then border radius 75 pixels, and then we can do this image width 100%. That's a, like I said, whoop. I'm not a CSS expert or a front-end expert, but I think that should do the trick. Yeah? Maybe? No? <laughs> uh, we might have to refresh to get that um, CSS. Overflow. overflow. Really? Oh, yeah, you're right. You need overflow here. Nice. All right, let's throw that. I forgot to save it before I got rid of that. Now we have to put Fred back in. Ah, sorry about that, everyone. Okay, well, it's getting there. Slowly, we're going to need a bit of padding here. Why is that overflow not working? Oh, not padding, margin. Oh. Who called out display block? Nice work. Oh, no, no. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to uh, update this this time. Fresh. There we go. Look at that. Hey, that's that's. We didn't actually need too much more than that. So, of course, all we have to do here is view post, and we'll see it on the front end. Same here. I guess we maybe want to write some CSS because our our uh, wrap is not working. Um, I'm guessing there's some styles applied to the header, but. You get the basic idea. I won't, I won't uh, 
put you through the, the ordeal of me trying to get those into circles, but if you're a front-end developer, I'm sure you can do that. Um, but you, you get the basic principle here. Some of the things you can do with this, though, is it, it can really go even much further beyond this. Like, you might decide that you want to build a block for uh, your uh, WooCommerce products, right? And you might want to put them in, say, a slide show or something like that. And you can put in a repeater and have, you know, populate them with each, each one with a product or something like that. And, uh, and you can go nuts. You can use WP query inside of your block to create a query and pull through particular posts and show them. The possibilities are as endless as any old theme template, which is what's really exciting to me. It makes building for and developing for Gutenberg a lot more fun and a lot more uh, accessible. So uh, that's, that's me. That's Block Lab. I uh, hope that you found this talk useful. Uh, if you want to check out Block Lab, you can at getblocklab.com. Um, I would like to take questions. Yes. Hang on, just bring in this. <coughs> So the million dollar question is, why is WordPress not built this into <laughs> Gutenberg? Why is WordPress not built this? Well, sometimes I want to answer people, well, you'll have to ask WordPress. But of course you can't, because WordPress isn't any one person. Uh, it's a community of people making decisions together. Um, I, I think part of the reason, uh, speaking honestly, is is the onus for Gutenberg. And if you'll allow me uh, <laughs> a little side thing here. OK, so I'm, I'm going to go off track a little bit. This will be fun. So the best internet ever was the internet in like 2004, right? 2005, something like that. When er there was no sort of centralized place for everything. Everything was messy. Everything was kind of ugly. And you had, it was hard to find stuff that you needed. but Gosh, it was fun, and you could discover, and you could explore, right? And the essential idea of the internet is that it's a distributed system, right? It's a web distributed around the world, and you can end up anywhere. Uh, these days, it's getting less and less distributed, right? Like we have Facebook. Lots of people think Facebook is the internet, and you can find almost anything there. Uh, Google is now not letting any its visitors see your site. It'll pull through the content of your site onto the search results. Right? You know, it's becoming less and less distributed all the time. I think that's a real problem because I believe in this vision of the internet. I believe in this idea that the web should be distributed, that content creators like you, should it should be easy for you to put what you want out there. But the reason why it's becoming more and more uh, or less and less distributed, more and more centralized, is because it's consuming content on those platforms is a lot funner. It's a lot more user friendly. It's a better user experience, right? Uh, and so uh, it be, it's, it's sort of hard for us as publishers, as content creators, to put content out there that competes with that. So how do we find a solution? Well, to me, that's what Gutenberg is about. Gutenberg is about making it easy for content creators to put stuff out there, easy to, for people like us to create these highly engaging, interactive, like high quality content uh, all over the internet, just, not just in one place. But in order to do that, we need to build a product, Gutenberg, which isn't only working with this major driver of the internet, WordPress, but also works with a lot of other platforms. Did you know, lots of people don't realize, but the latest version of Drupal has Gutenberg built into it. Gutenberg was originally created. The, sorry, the current version of Drupal works with Gutenberg. Uh, and Gutenberg was created for WordPress, but the big picture of Gutenberg, at least to me, is to get these tools to create these engaging uh, experiences uh, into the hands of everybody who wants to create content on the web. Not just WordPresses, but 
anyone in the distributed web. So in order to do that, we can't be platform specific. We can't be just tied down to PHP. Uh, we have to build something that is, uses some of the more difficult modern technologies. Sorry, it was a bit of a rant, but <laughs> hopefully that answers your question. Um, we have time for more questions. Yep. There is also a bit of a change in tact. Our speaker for the next presentation has not showed, so we're going to do an alternate session. So while we're organizing that, let's just keep the questions going. Um, yeah, I have a question over here to your right. Oh, um, it's Pat. I have a question about that block. So would it be easy enough to then create a block called team list that you could drop onto other pages using that content that you just created? Yeah, absolutely. The only change that I would make in that case is that I would create a repeater field as my first field in Block Lab and then put all of those fields that we did create as subfields of the repeater. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. But, but that would just then allow us to go new team member, new team member, new team member, right, new right. team member, and fill out all of those fields. Okay. As yeah. mm. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, given what you said about uh, Gutenberg being used in Drupal and there's a Laravel plugin for it too now, how easy is it to export from BlockLab into a format that you can use standalone without having to install BlockLab? Yeah, it's a great question. It's something that we get asked a lot, um, which is, wouldn't it be good if I could take my blocks that I've created and export them to put them on my si client sites, maybe without needing BlockLab installed? And the answer is that in shipping in WordPress 5.3 in November uh, is a new... Uh, a block directory and I'm still coming up like still learning about what it does but my understanding is we're going to have in WordPress we're going to have plugins we're going to have themes we're going to have blocks right as a separate thing for the first time where you can install these custom blocks and this is a new thing coming to WordPress and we've been waiting to see what that looks like and see what the format for that is before figuring out how to export does that make sense? So long-term vision is maybe, if we can, Block Lab would love to be able to export blocks, uh, but we're waiting to see what that looks like in core. Big round of applause for Luke. <laughs>